Isaiah 61. So good. This is so good. So Israel's right here. Here's all of Europe, right? Here's Africa. Here's India. And then, you know, the Asia and, and all these countries over here. And then the United States would be way over here on the other side. Here's Italy, right? But right here, this little tiny country called Israel is surrounded by all these other nations that are hostile toward it. Now, Jesus is going to deal with this. He's going to deal with it in the end times. So in the Dead Sea Scroll of Isaiah, Isaiah 61, this is likely the exact scripture that Jesus read from because these were the scriptures that were there during his time. And they were written 150 to 200 years before his birth. And they found the actual whole scroll of Isaiah. This is so awesome. The whole scroll of Isaiah was found around the Dead Sea, that's why it's called the Dead Sea Scrolls, in 1947, right after World War II, and just before Israel became a nation again. So exciting. So Jesus' first and second coming is what we see in Isaiah 61. And here it is from the Dead Sea Scrolls. Yahweh, that means God, right? Yahweh's spirit is on me because Yahweh has anointed me to preach good news to the humble. Now, who read that? Jesus. Jesus walked into his hometown of synagogue of, of Nazareth, and it was his turn, apparently, to read from the scriptures, and they unrolled the scroll. And he happened to come upon this scripture right here because he knew it was, it was going to happen, right? God knows everything. And he read from it, and they were all in awe as he read. They've heard stuff about him. All the eyes were focused on him, and, and it was just a powerful moment. So here we go. Let's continue. This is where he continued reading. And he has sent me to, to bind up the brokenhearted, in other words, to mend up the heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to those who are bound. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. Isn't that awesome? That speaks of what Jesus wants to do with you. He does it with us as believers. He heals us continuously. You know, as human beings, we get hurt. This world is is broken and it's hard and horrible things happen. And, and God's in the business of healing broken hearts. That is just the greatest news ever. And it makes me smile right now. <laughs> so let's continue on, you guys, in this beautiful scripture of Isaiah 61. To proclaim liberty to the captives, Jesus continued, and release to those who are bound. To proclaim the year of Yahweh's favor. Jesus stopped right here at a comma. This is the world's most famous comma right here. Jesus stopped there to proclaim the year of Yahweh's favor. And Jesus stopped. And what did he do? He rolled up this amazing scroll of Isaiah, he handed it back to the attendant and all the eyes inside of the synagogue were fixed upon him, the scripture says. And he sat down and he said this, today, these scriptures are fulfilled. Everybody in there knew that meant the Messiah. It was all messianic scripture. This is scripture forecasting, foretelling, prophesying about the Messiah. And Jesus said, today, right now, they are fulfilled. He was doing that already. He was healing the brokenhearted. He was healing the blood. He was helping people. And, and it was a, a favorable year of the Lord for Israel. And he did that. This was his first coming. He was humble. He was healing. He was forgiving this is who jesus was he was there was an open door with him to to teach people and heal people and this is what his first coming was all about but he stopped at a comma there's more to this passage and the rest of it speaks of his second coming and he's coming in vengeance he's coming as a great warrior the first time he came as the meek and mild the lamb of god who was slaughtered, slain from the foundations of the world. He was like the Passover lamb, the blood on the doorposts of those homes. They were the, the death angel would pass over those homes. When Jesus' blood is marked on you, so to speak, in a spiritual way, you have accepted Jesus and that blood that he shed on the cross is marked on you, my friend. You are saved. The death angel will not 
come upon you. He will pass over you away and you will live with him forever and ever and ever. That's the promise, you guys. So let's get into this. After the comma in this powerful prophecy, let's get into it right now. Here we go. Ready? Here it is. So what does the rest of it say? <laughs> and the day of vengeance of our God. Whoa, that doesn't sound like Jesus meek and mild. Well, it's not. In fact, did you know that the the rabbis and, and a lot of the sages and, and scribes back then, they were waiting for two messiahs. One of them was, was the Messiah, son of David, and the other one was Messiah, son of Joseph, or Mashiach bar Yosef, right? Messiah, son of Joseph. They were waiting for two. They thought they were two different messiahs, but it was actually one messiah with two different, very different comings, with two different missions. The first one was the suffering servant, which I think does speak a lot of Joseph. He was the suffering servant, right? And then the second one speaks of the king reigning, ruling and reigning on his throne, the son of David. And it's just speaking of the meek and mild Lamb of God and then the Lion of the tribe of Judah who will come and he will rule from Jerusalem for a thousand years, just as the scripture says, and he will bring vengeance upon the enemies of Israel, his enemies. Make no mistake, this is gonna happen. So let's look at that scripture. And the day of vengeance of our God. That's right out of the Dead Sea Scrolls. To comfort all who mourn. You know, Israel's mourning right now, you guys. After this October 7th thing, it was horrible. Horrible, horrible. And they're still being attacked. Why? Because they're Jewish. Because they have the same blood as Jesus, the Messiah. And this is who those people really hate. They hate Jesus. And so what happens? They attack the Jewish people. It's horrible. But here he says to comfort all. This speaks of his second coming of Jesus, the Messiah coming back to save Israel, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion. Zion in the Hebrew, Zion. Jesus is coming to protect and, and bring vengeance upon the enemies and to heal those who mourn in Zion. That's what his mission is going to be in the future, my friend to give them a garland for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning. He's going to give them joy in place of the mourning that they've been experiencing in Israel. That's what they've been experiencing lately, you guys. The world's against them. I mean, it's just horrible. Look at these colleges and universities, these protests. By any means necessary, they say, these protesters, they think it's okay what Hamas did. They've justified it in their minds. And these are the future leaders of the world. These are people from Harvard, Yale, Princeton, uh, all these major universities around the world protesting in alliance with Hamas, which is crazy because Hamas is the word that's used in Genesis chapter six, where God is saying, this is why I'm coming to destroy the world in a great flood. And Peter references the great flood as being like the type of, of what's coming in the future with this great tribulation period. So this speaks of the vengeance of God. And the reason God did that in the flood is because there was Hamas. That word is actually Hamas, the Hebrew word Hamas, the same pronunciation, everything. And it was all over the world. And what does it mean? It means violence, like wicked violence. And that's what we saw on October 7th with these crazy, demonic, diabolical Hamas characters that came in, those cowards who slaughtered women and children babies, infants. What's wrong with those guys? I'm not afraid of them and I'll tell it like it is. Okay. All right. Well, let's go back into this. So to give them a garland of ashes, the oil of joy for mourning. That's what he's going to do. That's what Jesus is going to do when he comes back. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Instead of that heavy mourning that they're experiencing, he's going to give them the garment of praise or the spirit of praise that they may be called trees of righteousness. Right? Isn't that beautiful language? 
the planting of Yahweh, that he may be glorified. This is all about glorifying God. This is why it's going to happen. So here's the Ezekiel 38-39 war, which I believe is, I think it's already starting in a sense because the stage is being set, right? A lot of people say, well, this isn't the war, but... You know, when World War II started, there was the stage was being set. That was part of the war. <laughs> and then it increases until the climatic moment. Well, what's the climatic moment of Ezekiel 38, 39? God destroys those who come down against Israel, destroys them. And it says in those scriptures that the whole world knows that he did it. Right. He did it. Not Israel, not their their military might or the the nukes no it's they know that god did it because there's going to be like 100 pound hail there's going to be huge hailstones there's going to be brimstone fire sulfur coming down out of the sky there's he's going to confuse the enemy they're going to be fighting with each other it's going to be supernatural and we're all going to probably see it right if you're here you're going to see it probably on media social media and all things those kinds of things right so this is the ezekiel war right here and uh you could see that the, the Ezekiel 38, 39 war, some say Gomer could be way up here in, in like parts of Germany, Eastern Germany, possibly, or this could be the area of Turkey, uh, Meshach, Tubal, uh, the area of Turkey, Turgama could be parts of this, some of these like Kazakhstan, some of these other countries around here. But we know that Persia, for sure, that Persia is Iran, historically, always has been. They changed the name to Iran, which is interesting because they did that right around the same time Time that the Nazis were calling themselves Aryans, they decided to change their country to Iran, which is Aryan, which is basically Aryan. That's what it means, which is really weird, right? They had this this weird evil alliance with Hitler and with Iran. These, in fact, the Hamas uh, founder, not the Hamas founder, but the Palestinian movement founder, the modern day Palestinians, he was in alliance with Hitler. He loved Hitler. Isn't that crazy? All right. Well, you're going to see it right here. You see that Persia's involved in this Ezekiel 38, 39 war. Magog could be Russia. We don't know for sure. Gog could be is the prince, the one that leads this army. And then you're going to see put uh, Libya, which is Libya, they say. Some say in Kush, which could be even like Somalia, um, Ethiopia, parts of Ethiopia, Sudan. Um, that's what we see there. So what's really interesting, though, is lately... As of late, Somalia started to enter into the picture now because Iran has these proxy countries, they call them. They're using other countries to fight this war that they're actually waging against Israel. And they're grabbing alliances in all these different places like Yemen, right? The Houthis, right? Uh, the Hezbollah, which are in Lebanon. They're not really true Lebanese, but they're the Hezbollah, the army of God, they're called. It's not really God. And then uh, Somalia is now, they're reaching out to the Somalis. And the Somalis are war. Warriors. They are fearless. You know, my buddies fought them in, in Third Ranger Battalion back in Somalia, back in the 90s. That was that movie, Black Hawk Down. Those were my friends that were in Bravo Company, Third Ranger Battalion. And uh, they said that Somalis were not afraid to die. They're, you know, they weren't as highly trained, but they were not afraid to die. So Iran is Persia, right, is reaching out to them to get them involved. And they could be the members of the the Kush area right here, this area of Africa, which could go all the way down to the Horn of Africa. So it's pretty interesting stuff, right? Let's continue on in this. So Ezekiel 38 says, you will come from your place out of the remote parts of the north, you and many peoples with you. And you will come up against my people, Israel, God says, like a cloud. This war has never happened, you guys, by the way. It has not happened in history. It's going to happen. So they'll come together. There will be like a cloud covering the land. And that's what satellite imagery looks like with big mobs of people. And it shall come about in the last days that I will bring you against my land. So that the nations may know me when I show myself holy through you before their eyes. So then all the nations are going to see this war. And every man's sword will be against his brother 
with plague and with blood, and I will enter into judgment with him. So he's going to turn them against each other, this evil alliance from the north that's coming down in the, of the mountains of Israel. Now, some say that Ezekiel 38, 39 happens later in the tribulation period because it looks similar. The language of the war uh, near the end of the tribulation period, like around, I think it's chapters uh, 16, 17, 18, 19, you know, in Revelation, but I don't think it is because the armies that's descri described near the end of the tribulation period are like the armies of the east, speaking of the eastern countries, right? Uh, crossing the Euphrates River. They're all coming together and they meet up to fight each other in the north and then they come down against Israel. So that's like a separate war. It's not described the same. And this Ezekiel 38, 39 war seems to me it leads up. It leads up to that before that great tribulation period, in my opinion. But, you know, we'll see. Time will tell, right? So he'll tweak with the army and every man will, will fight to bring their sword against each other, right? That's what we see there. And I will reign on him and on his troops and on the many peoples who are with him. Here it is. A torrential rain, hailstones, fire, and brimstone. Now, if there was a torrential rain, that'd be one thing you could say, well, that's, that could have just happened or, or hailstones, but these are huge hailstones, by the way. But then when fire rains down on them and brimstone, this is something different. This is something from God and the countries of the world, the nations of the world are going to know that. So it's going to be a supernatural, powerful thing that happens. There'll be huge hailstones. And hailstones have happened in history, big ones, and it's killed people, and, and it's just ugly, the whole scene. And there'll be brimstone, fire coming down out of, out of heaven, raining down on them. So I will prove myself, God says, great, show myself holy. He's going to prove this to the world and make myself known in the sight of many nations, and they will know that I am the Lord. That's the purpose of this war, you guys. The world is going to know that it is God. He is the Lord. And he wins in the end. Jesus wins in the end. He protects Israel in the end, just like Moses had a Gentile bride. And then God suddenly and unexpectedly calls him back to Egypt, which is a type of the world. And he sends him back to rescue Israel and all the, the plagues that are brought down are like the same as you see in Revelation. And you could even go back to Joseph's story. He had a Gentile bride as well too. They were both rejected the first time, right? Both Moses and Joseph by their own people the first time. But then they get a Gentile bride and then they save Israel during a time of great trouble. In fact, Joseph's time, it was a seven year time of great trouble and Israel comes back to him, bow down and he forgives them and he shows massive grace to them and, and saves them, the whole of Israel, all of them. It's an amazing thing. This is God's plan spelled out in the Bible. And you know, it's in my new book. You might wanna check this out. Go to amazon.com and you can see this book and it's comprehensive. You will see all that stuff about how Joseph is a type of Christ, how Moses is. There is just so much. It's over 300 pages. There's illustrations and all that stuff. Hey, and by the way, if you get this book, please don't forget, write a review because this will help spread the good news about this book to the whole world. And my my hope and my my prayers that the Jewish people, many of them will read this book and they will see that their Messiah Jesus was in their Tanakh. That's their, their Bible, right? It's just the Old Testament that he's in there the whole time. And I think it'll bless them big time, but I think it'll bless you too. So don't forget, if you get it on Amazon, please write a review that helps get it out there to the whole world. Hey, and don't forget, hit this playlist right here, how to see Jesus or how to find Jesus in the Old Testament. You will be blessed by it. You will see him in so many different places. So God bless you, my friend. Don't forget, click on this playlist right here.